We're gonna go ahead and stick this guy up inside there. That is basically the corrosion that used to be your old anode rod. And you can see how nasty this white water is. Welcome to another episode of RV Quick Tips, a series where we talk about RV topics that affect you in five minutes or less. In this case though, this is actually a reshoot or at least a reshoot of an introduction for another video that I posted recently. And that video was about anode rods. Now I just did a blanket video, talked about anode rods in general, and I missed something that's kind of important. And that's the fact that you might not need an anode rod. Uh, thank you to Richard B in the comment section for pointing this out to me. And uh, let's talk about that real quick. So when it comes to RV water heaters, at least the, the traditional tanked ones, there are two main manufacturers. There's Suburban and then there's Atwood. Now Atwood actually was bought out by Dometic. So if you have a Dometic, you actually have an Atwood. And Atwoods do not need anode rods. And I'm gonna spare you the, the details because I don't necessarily understand them myself. But essentially there's two different tanks that they have. So the Suburban has a tank that's prone to corrosion if you don't have something in there to corrode instead. And that's where the sacrificial anode rod comes in. Those anode rods are made of aluminum. And then there is the Atwood slash Dometic tanks. And those tanks are made out of something different, a different metal. And my understanding is that it's actually an aluminum based metal. So it kind of acts as an anode rod itself. But um, that part I kind of get lost in and instead I'm gonna direct you to this excerpt of a manual that I found. But here it kind of explains what the tank is made out of and how that part works. I'm gonna go ahead and link to this in the description. I'll put it in my Dropbox or something. Uh, but my manual that I was looking at didn't mention anything about an anode rod or how the tank works. So I think that's part of what led to the confusion, at least for me. So I'm hoping that this helps you figure out if you need an anode rod or not. If you have any doubt at all, if I would check your manual first and if your manual doesn't say, reach out to the manufacturer of your water heater. That said, if you do need to change your anode rod, you can continue to watch the video from here. If you do not need to change your anode rod, I still would recommend cleaning it about as, as, about as often as you would replace the anode rod because you're still gonna have stuff in there that probably needs to be cleaned out. So probably aim for a year to clean it out. And uh, if you wanna see how to clean it out, go ahead and continue watching as well because we get to cover that in this video. Today we're talking about anode rods and anode rods are basically a sacrificial metal that go inside your water heater. Basically there's elements inside your everyday water that would otherwise be corrosive to your water heater. And this makes it so that it's not a problem. So today we're gonna to be replacing the current one that's in there. And we'll also be cleaning out the original. And uh, yeah, that's basically about it. So before we get started, you wanna make sure that you turn off your water as well as your hot water heater you don't want your water heater heating nothing and then we can get started so we actually haven't changed ours um, since we got the RV and it's been a year so we're gonna be taking a look at that um, but before we can actually take out the existing anode rod we have to let out some hot water pressure so we'll open that up and you might have steam coming out of this. You might just have some excess water coming out. But either way, that depressurizes the tank that we're going to be getting into. You'll just need some type of tool to remove the existing one. It's weird that this is plastic. And then you just let it drain. You are supposed to check these once every, I think six to 12 months, depending on how, much, how often you use your RV. Also, while we're waiting for this empty, uh, when you buy your anode rods, they'll typically come with some pipe tape. Uh, you'll wanna use this on the threads of your anode rod. And what this does is it basically just makes a nice watertight seal whenever you put it in. So otherwise, without this, what could happen is water could leak out those threads. Now that we have the old anode rod, or lack thereof, out, we're going to go ahead and stick this guy up inside there. And basically, your goal is to just spray around inside the RV tank and get that nasty white stuff out of there. That is basically the corrosion that used to be 
your old anode rod. And you can see how nasty this white water is. Should be clear. And that's why we have this little tool. You can get this little tool on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think less than $10. So I actually had to rinse it out a lot more than I would have thought that I would have had to. Um, but it looks like it's clean now. So basically the last thing to do is to go ahead and put this replacement one in. Basically we're just going to go ahead and stick that in there and then screw it in. You'll be able to screw it in with your hand to a certain point, but whatever tool you use to take it out with, you're just going to go ahead and use that in, use that to screw it in the rest of the way. And that's it for this RV quick tip. Make sure you subscribe down below for more RV quick tips. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked it and We'll see you next time.